Hello once again to my fellow HO Slot Car fans. This is Mark Natividad over at West Coast Slot Cars in Los Angeles, California. Bring you another video. Hello, how's it going everybody? And I hope you are racing a lot of slot cars because I sure am. And today's video is going to be an extension of the last video. But before I start that, I would just like to say thank you to all of you who subscribe, who like, who send comments, and please send me comments and I will get back to you. And here is my contact information if you need to reach me. Hey, reach out and touch someone. They'll phone commercial, but give me a call. Give me a holler. Either way, I'll get back to you. Let's talk slot cars. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Whoosh, there it goes. Okay. So this is a continuation of the first video that I did a few weeks ago. I got the brand new Super 3 Formula slot car, and uh, it is a great car, and I've had a couple of weeks to work on it, and I just want to share with you what I've done to the car so far. All right, and uh, so just to, I'm going to move this out of the way, just to make a point here, I want to make sure that if you are looking for these cars, that you get this car with this on the package. So these are the newer cars, the ones that are just released this year. And you'll see up in the corner, it says features the all new smooth engaging 23 tooth crown gear and seven tooth pinion gear. So those are the new super threes. Don't get the, the older ones uh, because those will, uh, you'll have problems with those gears. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And back to this car. And it was a great project working on this car. And I'm going to go through step by step and show you what I've done, show you how to do it, and hopefully you've got the right tools, and we'll talk about that, of course, but let's get started. Now, before I uh, bring this car in or start taking this car apart, because it's all, it's all together, it's optimally tuned, I'm going to use a, a loaner chassis, and keep in mind this isn't the new chassis, but very, it's pretty much the same, except for the gears, the pinion and the crown, and I just want to show you how to disassemble to take these cars apart. So uh, there you go, bottom view. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to make sure that my pickup shoes are adjusted and I'll get that in a nice light there. So as you can see, proper adjustment means that you're going to have this nice black stripe along the full length of the pickup shoe right there. And I use my setup track, which uh, is here somewhere, there it is. So this is my setup track. And I believe I got this from Viper and this is the same setup track or same rail height as the AFX. So what you're going to do is put your car on the setup track, turn it upside down, and find the pickup shoes. I believe they're on this side. So I want to make sure that you can see them. So oh, it was on that side. So backing up the car. There you go. Look at that nice shot. Let me bring my pointer in here. As you can see, now you can see the rail connecting to the pickup shoe. So it is vitally important if you want to get the best wear out of your pickup shoes, making sure that you don't have wear spots or unevenness or uh, shoes that basically just wear out very quickly. What typically happens is you'll get holes in either the front of the pickup shoe or the rear pickup shoe, or you won't get an even line across the pickup shoe. So in all your slot cars, if you want any kind of performance out of them, make sure that you're adjusting the pickup shoes. All right, so let's, uh, let me try to do my best to keep this in view. I'm going to tear the car apart, or at least take off most pieces so that you know. This is the retainer clip for the body that just pops right off. There we go. Depends on which way I'm working here. There we go. That's off. And there's a back retainer on here, which holds in the uh, motor bushing, and you can access the, the bushings to oil if you need to, and that just easily pops off it. We're talking about the front here. So let me explain how to get this baby apart. So as you can see, there is a silver little paper clip looking retainer. And I want to take that off first. I'm going to go both ways here. Um, well, tell you what, let's use the tool here. I'm going to pop it off here from the side and lift it up and over and remove it. There we go. There's the retainer clip. I'm gonna put that down in my parts area right there. And you also see two retainers, which are here. And these basically will just fall right out. I'm just gonna turn the car over and they fall right out. There you go. No pressure needed. Okay, 
Now let's get to the pickup shoe removal. So keep in mind that this is a double hanger pickup shoe, which has a little sort of a square cut to it. So to take the pickup shoe off, you're going to take it from here, push the front of the pickup shoe or the top, because this is the bottom, push it over the tab and bring the pickup shoe off of the car. And because these are double pickup shoe springs, you have to sort of conniver this out of here. Eventually it comes out. It's like those metal puddles, puzzles that you see in the store and they say, okay, we'll take this piece out. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, ah, it's out. Okay, so once you have that out, you make the necessary bends and necessary adjustments, put it back together and make sure you do both sides and away you go. So for demonstration purposes, just wanted to use the that chassis so that I don't have to take the good one apart because I do want to run it. Okay, so I'm going to remove all these parts, set them aside, and I'm going to bring back in the car. Okay, so let's start uh, let's start this way. Let's start with removing the, the body. There we go. Okay. So after I remove the pickup shoes, as you can see on this chassis, there's a little brass area in there. And on the newer, these cars, uh, there's some glue that you'll have to remove. So I basically got in there. I think it's a, it was a hot glue or it was very easy to remove, but I just took my X-Acto blade and I got in there and I scraped all of that out of there until I was able to access the screw. So once I got there, I actually used my jeweler screwdriver. It's a very fine point Phillips head. You can see that. I hope that's in focus there. And what you're going to do is use that Phillips head and put it right in there and basically turn the screw. So. What we're doing here, and it's easy to demonstrate this way. So let's say these, this is one screw on this side, this is the other screw on this side. When you turn the screw clockwise, it puts more pressure on the spring and the motor brushes go closer into the armature, which give it a little bit more pressure, which in turn may give you more uh, RPMs. So what I'm going to do is adjust both sides and I put on a little power supply and I go ahead and I do, I screw it in there and I listen for the, the rev. I try to get a high rev. Once I optimally get that high rev, I back it off maybe a quarter or a half a turn. And then I turn it around and I start over. So I start turning it, turning it, looking for that high rev. And if it stops or it starts to go down, then I'm going to back the screw off. But I want to leave the screw set so that I get the highest rev. So that's going to give you more RPM. So that's going to help your, your car, give you some top speed. Okay, so again, first things first, to get to that, don't forget to scrape the glue off. Make sure that you have a nice fine screwdriver here and then make the adjustments using power. If you've got a dyno or a tachometer, that's great. We actually put the wheels on it, but I actually removed my whole axle and I just listen for it by sound. It's, uh, it's easier to, uh, to show you, but I didn't wanna go through that process because I wanna get to the performance of this car. Okay, so once I did that, again, I adjusted the pickup shoes and I, I got a little bit more rev out of that. So the car is ready to go and I'm going to put the car back in here. So let's talk about the axles and the wheels. Okay, so as you know, because of the toy laws, the wheels are usually pressed onto a knurled axle. Now, the problem with the knurled axle is that well, they're knurled and they, uh, there's little crosses or crisscrosses on the axle, which when you slide the tire onto the axle, it's always crooked. So your tire tire's going to be a bit wobbly. So for this project, I, I, I was thinking I'll go with a lifelike axle, but I wanted to try something different. I had a bunch of Super G Plus axles in my box with the old wheels on them and I pulled the wheels off and I used my press to put the new wheels on. So if you don't have one of these tools, this is my uh, uh, wheel press. Uh, that's a BSRT from Scale Auto. And this is my puller. I believe that's a Lucky Bob. So you're going to need those tools to do the right job. Don't try the old hammer hammer method. That, that generally never works out very well. You always get crooked wheels. So um, again, G plus axle. 
And again, I removed the gear and everything off of the G+. Plus. I actually popped it in and keeping the same pinion or the stock pinion that came on the car, the mesh was really nice, very nice. But I just wanted to try something different. So um, I'll get back to the gear in a second, but um, let me finish the wheels here first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I get so excited. Okay, so I went with the Harden Creek. These are the HCS AMG single flanged front and rear hubs. And you can buy a set of these. Uh, Terry over at Harden Creek. Hey, Terry. He makes these wheels in five different colors, red, white, blue, yellow, and black. So uh, I actually tend to like the black wheels. It gives the car more of a, a racing look and a, a race, racing car look. I'm not so much into the chrome cars unless it's a street car or a, a really nice show car, but uh, these wheels are great on this car. So I press these wheels onto the axle. And for the tire size, I had a bunch of different tires in my box. I ended up going with the 0.474 AFX Super Tire. Now these are older tires. The newer Super Tires actually have a rounded uh, wall in the front, a rounded sidewall in the front, which actually makes it little, look a little better, but these were just in my box and I was basically just trying to use what I had. All right, so that is that. So we got the wheels uh, front as well. There are my fronts. Those are the Harden Creek as well. Uh, very nice uh, spin on there. I used a lifelike axle, I believe, on those. A little bit of play there. And for the front tires, I went with a silicone front tire. Now, keep in mind that a silicone front tire isn't going to give you better handling. It's just going to quiet the, the front down a little bit more and give you more of a softer ride. So the, the car is not as clickety-clackety or loud when the plastic wheels are hitting, especially with uh, low tires. So these I actually got from a guy over at Specialty Plastics. He's on eBay. And these are the, uh, the Tyco front tires for the 440X2s and the narrow chassis. And, you know, they're relatively cheap. I can't remember what I paid for them, but I got a bag of them, and, and those seem to work out really nice. So all in all, when everything was said and done, bring the setup block back in here. I put the car on, and there we go. It's not touching. All those, there's a, see a little space in there. It's very, very, it's very low. So the car sits very nice. Again, that's another reason why you want to have a setup block. So you can actually see the car. There we go. There's the back. There, now, oh, now you can see. There we go. So it sh you should not be touching. So if you are touching, then you're going to be scrubbing some speed. So there you go. And pick up shoes, making sure that they are flat to the rail on each side. And again, what I'm looking for is those nice score lines here. Those nice, oops, sorry about the camera. Nice score lines on there so that my rail is contacting the shoe front to back nice and even. Okay, uh, that's it for the car. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not it for the car. I forgot the last thing. Uh, let's talk about the gear really quick. I went with a, which I had in my box. I went with the BSR T23 tooth. I, you know, I put a, a Super G Plus on there and it, the mesh was really good, but I just wanted to try another gear. And, I, you know, I could have gone a 22, which I think if, if I'm racing, there we go, I could have. But there we go. This is a 23. You can kind of see the numbers down there right in the, in the light. So um, the mesh is very nice, very smooth. And I, I kept it stock. I, I didn't feel that I needed to, uh, uh, I don't know, change the pinion. And the mesh was very nice. So there you go. What you want a nice, smooth, quiet mesh. So BSRT was it for me. I'm sure you can use another one. You can use a 25 off the Super G Plus or the Lifelike or uh, go with an aftermarket a BSRT from Scale Auto or Viper. So uh, that's it. I did tighten up the front a little bit, you know, a little bit of play there. And you want to have a little bit of play there, just a little bit, not, not too much, but just enough for that gear to move freely, making sure you oil your bushings front and back, uh, your connection points to the chassis front and back, and you're good to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back the camera up a little bit or move it forward and focus on my monitor here. See if I get you into focus. There we go. All right, so messing around, I think I did a 4-1. All right, that was messing around. That was really after a few laps, but I'm going to clean the tires, put the car on. Let me grab my controller really quick. 
wipe the tires down really quick. Give it some rev here. There we go, sounds nice. All right, let's do some laps, here we go. All right, give me a second to warm up. Here's the lap counter. Four ones on the car. Much improved over the first. Let me show that to the car out of the package. Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh, a three nine. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a record. You know what? I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Wow, three nine. So, uh, wow. Uh, amazing. The car is, is running really nice. The car is running as it should, and it's running as optimal as, as I want it to run. Um, quite, quite impressed. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very good running car. Let me get that back into focus there. All right. Very good running car. And I'll put that back there. Overall, I say that, uh, my little project, my experimenting has served me well. So I did a three nine on the track today is, so if you want to go back and see what times I did with the car out of the package, then you'll have to go back and watch the first video, which, which you should, you know, you always want to make the sequel better. But uh, all in all, it's a great car. It runs well. I like it. And I'm, I'm just going to say it, it's, it's as fast as a Mega G Plus. Not as smooth because you have a lot of mass on the pickup shoes, but it can, it can hang. And uh, I, 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 well, I compared it to the, the stock car, the, Na, the modern day NASCAR, the car tomorrow. So uh, I'm sure if I used a F1 body, it would, uh, it would be a different story. But uh, Nevertheless, I got a 3.9 and for the video purposes and so that you can see how much better the car runs, uh, it was a good, good comparison. So all in all, yes, get yourself a Super 3. And uh, again, make sure that you have the right tools if you're going to be working with the car. Um, there's my contact information there if you need to reach me. And uh, it, it, gosh, what a project. But uh, I, I was coming home every day after work and working on a little bit. Oh, I can make it faster. Oh, I got to do this, that, this. So, uh, so many combinations. And so, hey, you know, I did the work for you so that you don't have to and you can make the best decisions on getting your car tuned up. So overview, uh, overview uh, using the, the parts from the following manufacturers, Harden Creek, the front and rear wheels, the HCS AMG single flange wheels, the 0.474 super tires for the rear wheels, the B, uh, Super G Plus rear axle, the BSRT 23 tooth crown gear, the front, that's uh, the front silicone tires from Specialty Plastics over on eBay. And again, those are for the Tyco 440X2, the narrow chassis or the smaller wheels. And that is pretty much it for parts. Everything else is stock. So, uh, gosh, there you have it. And I want to wrap up today and say thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging in there, staying with me. And thank you for uh, supporting my channel and, and uh, making it fun for me. I love this. I love sharing the information with you guys. And I will continue to do these videos. Just uh, sh give me a shout even if you, if you just want to say hi. Call me too, even. I'll, I, I may pick up the phone. You never know. Okay, but uh, thank yous are definitely in order, and I'm going to go alphabetically. I would like to say thank you to Auto World. Thank you to Harden Creek Slot Cars. Thank you to Scale Auto, and that is the BSRT products, the puller and the gears. Uh, uh, oh, I can't uh, forget uh, Lucky Bob for the Lucky Bob puller. And last but not least, Viper for the setup track. So... That's going to do it for my videos today. And I will wrap up saying this is Mark Natividad once again over at West Coast Slot Cars in Los Angeles, California, saying goodbye for now, race happy, and God bless. See you next time. Bye.